Hello and welcome to Joy in Our Town. I am so delighted that you're here today. If you're a resident of Central Florida or maybe you're visiting in our wonderful community, we welcome you into uh, TBN today and we want to give you a reason why there should be a smile on your face because there's joy in Central Florida because of what God is doing in and through the lives of individuals and ministries and organizations that are serving the kingdom of God and serving humanity, and they are located right here in Central Florida. I'm George Cope, and I'm going to be your host for the next 28 minutes as we spend some time together, and we enjoy a conversation with someone that is making a difference. And so I want to welcome Terry Michaela. Thank Terry, you. welcome to Joy in Our Town, and you are a reason why people are smiling today in Central Florida. Now, they don't know why yet, but they're going to find out because you're doing something very compassionate. You are a supervisor of Adoption by Shepherd Care here in the Orlando region. So tell me about Adoption by Shepherd Care. What is it and why were you drawn to that particular organization and ministry? Well, I started working with a pregnancy center in Palm Beach County uh, in the early 90s. And after working there 11 years, I wanted to move up to Central Florida. And I had referred a lot of clients to Adoption by Shepherd Care. And I really liked the way they treated um, women who, were choosing, who had chosen adoption. And so um, you know, I came in 2007. And um, I've been working with moms, birth moms, and I also have worked in the international program. Adoption by Shepherd Care was started in 1980 by a pastor and his wife wow. who wanted to make a difference. Wow. And so when, when they work, so I just want our viewers to understand context. So when this ministry, you work with a birth mom that chooses to release that child so that that child can be uh, adopted. Yes. And uh, so you then connect and work with them to help that process and then finding families that you can connect that child with. Absolutely. And then, of course, we have the international adoption. Okay. So that's two different things. So we're going to talk about that uh, here right now. Let's talk about this. Adoption is, is growing, I think, in influence yes. in, our, in our world, in our country. What is international adoption? Why, why is there a term of international adoption? I'm honest, I really don't understand. Okay. There are, across the world, 142 million Orphans. Say that again. 100? 142 million orphans. In our world. In our world. If just 5% of the people who said they're Christians would adopt, we could get rid of the orphan problem. In the world. In the world. Wow. Only 5% of those that follow Christ would adopt. Yes. Wow. Well, that's a challenge. That's a challenge. Yeah. And so in, in this process, then it must be, and I hate to say this, but it could become big business for some people if we're not careful. Well, and that's why we have the Hague. Like, uh, the U.S. has adopted the Hague Convention, okay. and the Hague Convention protects children from being trafficked. And uh, so we are Hague accredited and have been since the U.S. adopted the Hague in 2008. Wow. So why should families consider adopting a child from another country? You know, I think... Every family has to make their decision. They can adopt domestically. There are children through the, through the state, of course. Some of them aren't free for adoption yet. They're still working through the process. When it comes to orphans in other country, they have already been um, declared adoptable. Okay, and so they're, they're so ready to they're move in. Ready to move into an adoption. And it, it, is it because it's easier internationally to adopt or not? No, I wouldn't say it's easier, no. <laughs> okay, but it just seems like we hear a lot about international adoptions when we see a lot of children yes. that are of different nationalities of their parents in that process. Yes, yes, and because there are so many children uh, in orphanages and uh, in care right. across the world. Yeah. Several years ago, I was privileged to go to, uh, to Russia. Mm -hmm. I've been on four occasions, and every time that I went, I was taken to an orphanage it, almost with the intention by the government in those early days when the walls came down to show the numbers of children. So I've seen it firsthand and realized there's got to be challenges to adopting children from another country. And uh, if, if parents who, who are interested aren't sensitive to that, they could find themselves 
I would assume, in some great difficulty. Could you help clarify? Sure. There may be those that are watching that are interested. They just don't know what to do. Right. The first thing to do is you have to be familiar with the laws of the U.S., particularly U.S. immigration. And so it's very important to connect yourself with an agency so that you can follow the laws. So not only can you adopt the child in that country, but you can bring that child home to the U.S. Okay. So it, in, what you're saying is that it's possible they could go to the country and get a child, but not be able to adequately get them back or the laws could stop them from bringing them yes, back. Yes. There's a process the USCIS wants them to follow. And the first thing is not to go to the other country to adopt. It's to do the steps that the USCIS requires. So uh, maybe we ought to back up just for a moment. Uh, I know there is on the screen, there are, there's going to be information of your uh -huh. service so they can contact you by, by email or by phone and reach out to you. If, if there was a, a viewer that is really interested in adopting internationally, uh, give me some steps. Okay. What would they, what would they do? I, I, I'm ready to adopt. What would I do? I need to call you. What would you tell me to do? You first identify what country. Okay. And then you find an agency that has a program in that country. And once you find, and that, that agency might be in Connecticut. It might be in another state and that's okay. Then you have to find an agency in Florida or the state you live in and they have to um, do a home study for you. What is a home study? It's preparation, education, and doing the things that the Florida law requires us to do in regards to background checks and checking out your home to make sure that everything, that you're, you're prepared and you're ready to adopt and suitable to adopt. So basically, it's a, it's a structural preparation to get people. Because I, I would assume it's one thing. I remember bringing home the, our only daughter, uh, uh, and that challenge a lot of years ago, a lot of decades ago, uh, and feeling almost inadequate, even though she was our own child. But the challenges have got to be pretty enormous when you're bringing international children. Well, because you're dealing with language barriers sometimes and, and cultural things. Yeah. And, and we're hearing more about parents, and I would assume that we're not as prepared when they get children and they have issues and, and now almost want to send them back. That's got to be another growing kind of concern. That is a concern. It's a concern of all agencies, and it's a concern of the government. And that's where, you know, adequate preparation before, but also support after the adoption is really important. So does adoption by Shepherd's Care give that kind of support if you went through it so that yes. you're, they're not walking blindly even after that takes place? Absolutely. Now, I, I understand it's one thing to want to adopt and find agencies that will help, but there's got to be some legal ramifications as well, right? Well, it's, it's does a Does everybody very, have to have an attorney? Well, it, there is attorneys involved if you're doing an international adoption the adoption actually happens in the foreign country like we for instance have a colombian program we have a uh, license with colombia for adoption so we have attorneys that we work with there that take care of the legal process for the families so you'd have to have an attorney there and then one here no you don't need one here okay. for international adoption okay um can a child coming from another country internationally uh, adapt to our country? I, I think that becomes the, the real challenge, living in the United States. What, what are some of the things that you've discovered as a result of that, these children coming to adapt to our country? Well, of course, there's the cultural changes. There's the language, you know, and if you're adopting a child from a country that you don't speak the language, there are um, challenges there. But we find families getting through those challenges every day and children usually by the time the child's been here six months they have a pretty good grasp on the language wow. it's time kind of like parenting a child any other way biologically you need to give the child time right. and that's the biggest thing when when a person is thinking about and we've got to take a break in just a moment but when a person is thinking about adopting and uh, internationally what would you think in that process of making the decision because they're saying well maybe we're leaning toward adoption we want to do it internationally what would be some of the things that you would 
think that they need to be doing right now before they actually make the phone call or start the process that would help them to be settled in themselves that we're following uh, and making the right choice for ourselves and for a child that we're going to bring back to this country? I think adoption is a process and I think one of the biggest things they need to do is get as much information as they can and they can call numerous agencies, they can call our agency, but the more information they have, the better equipped they're going to be to make okay. the decision. So it, it, if they called you and said, uh, we want to do this, so what kind of information would you send them? Well, we would send, we would first talk to them. Okay. We're not going to just send them information. We're okay. going to talk to them about the different kinds of adoption, what makes them interested in adoption, okay. and ask them questions, and then send them information about different possibilities okay. so that they can make a decision. I, I, and I think that's, that's just really what I want because it, it needs to be that they see that this is a process that's not going to be rushed or forced, mm -hmm. but it's something that has to be done in a way where they feel affirmed in doing that. You know, life is so valuable, isn't it? I, how sure many is. adoptions do you think you've been a part of through all these because you've done this for a lot of years haven't yeah. you? Yeah boy that's the question I haven't really thought about that okay. I know this year well, yeah I I know we've done over 30 domestic this year or 40 but um, wow. so just this year for nearly 40 adoptions and and I'm sure that there's some connection that you feel with each of those families oh, in absolutely. the process but it's it's significant and I I I'm so grateful. You know, this program is about highlighting uh, agencies, organizations that are here in Central Florida that are helping people make a difference in our world. And I just am so grateful that you're here. I, I want to uh, take a break, and when we come back, we're going to flip it to the domestic side. We're going to look at what it's like here locally, and, and I think you can help us to understand things a little bit better. You know, the, our, our Lord put a high priority on children. He sure did. He, uh, one day, you remember the story, he said, uh, let the little children come to me. And um, it, it was in the midst of it, he blessed them and said, unless you become like this, you won't be in the kingdom. You've got to see that. And I think that what you're doing is really a kingdom-related kind of an event that is so important. And as our viewers, uh, I want to just encourage you to realize that Again, agencies like uh, Adoption of, of Shepherd Care is there to serve you and help you. And if you're thinking about that, right on your screen is all the information you need. I want you to go there and take a few moments to uh, talk to them, uh, do some investigation, and uh, let Terry help you uh, find your way through this process. And remember, you can make a difference in someone's life through adoption. And so that's the conversation we're going to have. But we're going to take a break right now. When we come back, Terry's going to keep talking to us about some other aspects of adoption. But we're so glad that you're with us and you've chosen to be with us today. Please, we're take a break. You stay there. We'll be right back. Why? Because we want you to smile. We want to give you a reason that you can smile for living in Central Florida. You stay with us. We'll be right back. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome back to Joy in Our Town. I'm George Cope, and I'm just so delighted that you've chosen to be with Terry and I. Terry Michaela is with us. She is the supervisor of a, an adoption ministry called Adoption of Shepherd Care here in the Orlando area. Terry, thanks again for being with us. Thank We're you. so delighted, and thank you for committing your life's work to helping families who want to make a difference in children's lives. Uh, a question, when we're going to talk about domestic adoption, but when you think about people that adopt, how many people adopt that already have children versus people that don't have children and adopt because they want a family? Is that a significant factor that you see? 
I see, with domestic adoption, we see a lot of families adopting that either are not able to have a biological child or maybe they've had a child, but medical reasons don't allow them to have another child. Okay. So that, that's the reason why. Is it, um, is it growing that people that have had, or have children are wanting now to impact because of the influence and the needs that are both domestic and internationally for adoption? Or does that not affect it? I, just I more think, individually? I think it's more individual. And I think more with international adoption are they adopting because those children are waiting for homes where with domestic adoption, we're talking about children that are yet to be born. Okay. Now that's that's it. So that was the that's what domestic adoption is. Well, domestic adoption can also be adopting out of the system mm -hmm. through DCF, but adoption by Shepherd Care does uh, voluntary infant adoption. Okay. So basically, you're working with young women who are pregnant that are going to give birth, and you're now finding families that will take those children from that birth mother and give them a home in that process. Absolutely. And even though it, for me they might seem young, it's not the young girls that we used to we used to see placing their babies for adoption. I would say the average woman that places her child for adoption with us is between 24 and 35 years old. Wow. Sometimes they've had abortions or multiple abortions in their past and they don't want to do that again. Some of them have children already and they know that they're not equipped and prepared to parent another child. If, if someone is viewing this program, and that's our prayer that we would not just talk about an issue, but that, that God would, would love on them and help them, and they're pregnant, and they're not sure that they have the capacity or want to keep this child, uh, what, would, what would you say to them if they called you on the phone? I would tell them the same thing I would tell a family, that adoption is a process. Today you won't know, and we're not here to convince you that adoption is the best thing for you. We're here to give you information so that you can then make a decision of what's best for your child and for you. I think so often when these kinds of things happen, obviously I'm sure those young women or middle-aged women, whatever, are confused and lonely and desperate to find to know that you're going to be a friend on the other end and you're not there to try to take from them, no. but you're there to help them through the process. That, that's amazing. So do, do you see families or parents um, learning more, uh, leaning more, I should say, to domestic adoption or open adoption or what? What are you finding today? I would say most, well, families who want to adopt an infant are usually going to go towards domestic because you're going to most likely get a baby straight from the hospital. Okay. Okay. Whether in regards to open adoption, we take a little bit more um, middle of the road approach and because we're introducing two people who don't know each other and we don't know the mom. And so we want it to be the best thing for her, for her child and for the family. So we start out what we call semi-open. And, and then as the relationship grows, if they want to open it up and have more of an open adoption where there's direct contact with the family and the birth mother, that's fine. Okay. So, so domestic adoption is that child is released by the, the birth parent to become the child. The open is that they're, they tend to be older and then they go well, the have this relationship. The openness has to do with what kind of relationship the birth mother and the family is going to have. I see. Okay, right? great. And uh, that, that is, I'm sure, a very significant conversation as it relates to the process. Absolutely. So, um, so again, because we are a, a, a program that's trying to help people, would you describe uh, some of the steps of domestic adoption for us? Uh, how long would a family wait, and, and what are they going to actually need to do for a domestic adoption okay. if they were to come to you? Okay. So they would have to have a home study again. And how that, long does that take? A home study will take anywhere between two months and four months, depending okay. upon how motivated the family is to get all their paperwork in. Okay. Because it's paperwork, but it's also education, it's preparation, that we come alongside them um, as their advocate okay. to 
try to get them approved so that they can adopt. So would you come to their home and be a part of that? During the process, okay. we visit them in their home, we visit them individually okay. and as a couple gotcha. and in our office as okay. well. Okay, so keep going. And then, of course, they have to do background checks and we have to get all their vital statistics and everything. Once they get then they put together a profile which is a story about themselves with pictures and captions and and um, when they get shown to a birth mother and chosen then um, we say from the time they get their home study done until they get chosen we ex tell a family to expect they could wait about a year and a half okay um, but some families are chosen a week later um, it, it, that that's challenging at best for some people because we're we're in an instant society we want that but that's all necessary it's so necessary for that background so that everything is in proper order right. and that people are it takes time so that we can prove that we are as families ready for this child to come into our lives because it is going to be what is the big the big piece that families face when they adopt that they wouldn't face if it was their child being born into their home. What do you see those those issues being that that these adoptive parents feel and face in this? Well, sometimes families worry like, will this child say, I want my real mother, you know, or will this child be like me? What will I tell this child about his or her uh, biological parents you know and um, but every family faces challenges I'm a mother of four kids and I betcha some of my kids if they would have had the chance would have said I want to go live with somebody else <laughs> <laughs> at some point in their life right yeah. because I was too strict yeah you know yeah so it it I guess what I'm what I'm hearing you say is that it's okay to have some questions it's Absolutely. okay to process because that's normal for everybody to go through in the process you know I uh, again I've talked to some families that have adopted and one of the things that people will talk about is the cost there's a, why are adoptions so expensive in America when when we've got millions of babies in the world and even domestically how many um, do we know what um, the numbers of children waiting for adoption in America are I don't have that in my okay. fingertips but okay. it's not as many of course adopting through DCF right. isn't expensive right okay. okay so but it is private adoption is expensive and it is kind of like um, any other um, nonprofit organization we have to pay the phone bill and the light bill sure, and sure. you know the, those kinds of things uh -huh. and then in Florida um, a uh, the law allows a family to help a birth mother with her living expenses and of course there's legal costs and then like I said the agency costs and stuff like okay. that so those those are all the factors those that are, are there. All the factors, absolutely. Um, God forbid, but uh, you have to ask the questions. Have you ever had people that have gone through the process and even gotten the baby and said, "We can't do this"? Is there a is there a process? The, the or family a time? decides that they. Yeah. Or the, a birth mother. A, Let's talk with the birth mother. Are birth mothers quick to change, or once they make their their decision? Well, a birth mother, up until the time the baby's born she cannot sign anything that's legally binding okay okay Florida's law says once she signs the consent which is her legal paperwork she has no time to change her mind so she has to know when she's signing it that this is this, this is for good okay um, and um, in the process these are all for the protection of the baby aren't they? absolutely and, and we're there and we're concerned about the children you know I I've done this program now for an extended period of time and I realize that anytime you're on you're on television you're talking to a metropolitan region that there are people out there that are going through challenges I'm sure that there are uh, women that are watching that want to be moms and maybe this program has been just a little bit of a of an ouch to them mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna ask you as a mom you're a grandmother too so yes. you have how many grandchildren eight grandchildren eight grandchildren so you you know what it's like uh, to both have and then to work with people that do not have 
Could you just take a couple of minutes and talk to women about whatever you feel that the Holy Spirit would inspire you to say to encourage them and maybe pray for some from those women that are hungry, longing, desperate, uh, just knowing that God cares about them. Would you do that for us? Sure. Yeah. So I would, I guess I would like to speak to both population, both moms who are uh, pregnant and not prepared to be a parent right now, and to um, women who want to be parents and to just know that God loves you and God does have a plan for your life. It's, we understand that both of you are in pain at this time and for, for all parties it's a process and today could be the beginning of you checking out and beginning and to know that if you call Adoption by Shepherd Care and probably other agencies too, you will find a listening ear and a caring, um, caring people on the other line. We want to come alongside you in your process and just see what we can do to help you and um, answer all those questions that you have because there's a lot of questions and it's a scary thing. It's a scary thing to make that first call and let me go ahead and just pray for you right now. Father, I pray for each woman and men that might be watching the show too. Father, I pray that you would help them to know um, if this is something that they should pursue and get more information about. Father, I thank you for um, all the listeners, all the watchers of this show, and just pray that you would give them hope that you have a plan for their life. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Terry, for joining us today. And I trust that it has been inspirational for you, informational for you, to be able to make some good decisions. You pray about it. Who knows what God will do? You may raise a child that can impact our world in a supernatural way for Jesus Christ. Well, I trust that you have a smile on your face now that you've spent some time with us here at TBN. Know that Trinity Broadcasting Network cares about you. They love you. That's why this program is here. So we look forward for you joining us next week. We'll have another guest to talk to you about why you should smile in living in Central Florida. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye for now. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.